Natalia Aristizabal, and I am going to be your MC for this morning until we finish today. And then we're gonna um, talk about logistics and then we're gonna march. Okay, so that's like our program for the next 10 minutes. about why we're doing this, I want to call a very special member, um, a very special human mom worker, to give us a little bit of why she's doing this today, right? Why are we here and why are we doing this? So I want to escuchar de Silvia García, una miembro de Se Camino Nueva York, amiga, mamá, compañera, trabajadora de todo, que nos comparta por qué está haciendo esto. She will say it in English and then I will translate it to Spanish. Oh, you say it in English? Sorry, the other way around. She'll say it in Spanish, I translate into English. Buenos días a todos. ¿Más? ¿Ahí? Okay. Estoy acá por mi familia, por mis amigos, por mi comunidad, porque es momento de que se nos respete, es momento de que se nos tenga en cuenta Eh, tengo mis padres y mis hermanos que ya no tienen cómo pagar la renta. Yo no sé mañana qué va a pasar, yo no sé qué voy a hacer mañana, ¿sí? Porque nosotros vivimos en casas separadas, entonces son dos rentas, no es una sola. Yo estoy sin trabajo, mis papás, mis hermanos están sin trabajo. Cada año, sin fallar, desde que llegué acá a Estados Unidos en el 2002, he hecho mis taxes. Entonces no se me hace justo que cuando necesito una ayuda, igual que la necesita toda la comunidad inmigrante, se nos excluya. So, hi, my name is Silvia. I'm here um, today because this is a really hard time. My, um, I'm not currently working right now. My husband or my siblings are not working. We are living in two homes. We do not know how we're gonna make rent and pay rent. I don't have a job yet, um, or I don't have a job. And we are not qualifying for any help and we're not getting any help. And I don't know how we're gonna pay rent. Um, I don't know how my family, my dad and my siblings who are also unemployed are gonna do to pay the bills that we have to pay. Yo creo que es hora de que hagamos que, que nos vean, que nos escuchen, porque si hay gente que tiene billones de dólares, hay 118 billonarios acá en Nueva York, este, que cada día se hacen más ricos y no pagan taxes. ¿Por qué? No entiendo por qué es eso. Es como que este, el pobre sigue pisoteándolo y haciéndolo más pobre Y no tenemos derecho a nada, no tenemos derecho a, a ni a siquiera decir un futuro fuera de lo que es esta pandemia que ha pasado, porque ha sido una pandemia, pero también es la crisis que viene después. There is 118 billionaires here. Uh, they should pay. Uh, they, they should pay. They should pay taxes. They should pay for this. They have plenty of money. Um, we are in the middle of a pandemic, but they have been able to make more money throughout this time, so they should be able to pay. Y lo último que quiero decir es que gracias a todos los que han hecho este, la, el ayuno, a todos los que durmieron junto a mí porque dormimos en la calle, 
No es nada el haber dormido ayer en la calle si conseguimos algo hoy, pero el problema es que tal vez nuestras familias terminen de esa forma si seguimos así. So I want to thank all the fasters, everyone who slept with me in the streets yesterday, um, because we needed to do this because we have to fight for our families because my worry is that if we don't find any relief, then we're actually going to be sleeping on the streets for real. So what the chant said is Como listen, we're in this struggle. That was one the first chat. And then the second chat is And then the other que tratan de buscar un poquito de espacio y que siempre tenga la máscara puesta encima de su nariz. Cubra su nariz también. Gracias. Okay. y vamos a ir hasta la oficina de Como y es muy posible que la policía nos vaya a acompañar porque ellos hacen eso y que en algún momento nos quieran preguntar qué estamos haciendo, por qué lo estamos haciendo y la pregunta es ¿van a hablar ustedes con la policía y les van a contestar lo que ellos le están preguntando? ¡No! Correcto, la primera instrucción del día es estamos haciendo una acción y hay personas aquí que nos pueden ayudar a interactuar con la policía de una forma amable ese trabajo no es de ninguno de ustedes que está aquí, ¿ok? Las personas que están encargadas de hablar con la policía ya lo saben y casi tienen eh, o son de... A la hora de empezar la marcha, le vamos a pedir que por favor cojan la bandera para ir delante y nosotros detrás de la bandera. So, alguno no cojan pancarta para que puedan sostener la bandera a la hora de salir a marchar. Next announcement is mainly for the fasters, and um, Modesta will say it in Spanish and then I'll say it in English. Let's give them an applause, they fed some people while they were here. From the very moment I was asked to speak, I knew that I had to do justice in this commemoration of Eric and Erica Gardner, and I can't honestly look at myself in the mirror and say I did that without talking about the reason their lives were taken in the first place. That reason being, we have institutional racism existing on every level of our government being fueled by the most wealthy in our society. We have elected officials like Andrew Cuomo that are funded by some of the most wealthiest and think it's a, it's a good idea to cut $10 billion from public schools, hospitals, food banks, and senior services to make up for our state's $14.3 billion budget deficit. And throughout the pandemic, around 2 million New Yorkers and still counting have lost their jobs. That means the fewer people that are working, the less money that the state will be receiving in income taxes since the unemployed don't have an income to pay taxes on. New York is home to more billionaires to deliver a message to those 118 billionaires that are living in our city. If you are going to stay here, if you are going to make money here, you better be prepared to contribute here. 
And no Steve Schwartzman, no Barry Diller, no Ken Longo, no Jeremy Jacobs, no Michael Bloomberg. When I say contribute, I don't mean to the politicians that'll do your bidding. I don't mean to the NYPD that'll do your bidding. I mean contribute to all of the communities of black and brown people that you have harmed through your action. I know it may be hard for some of you out there who fear change because growing up, we are conditioned to believe that the police are heroes. However, you need to realize that's all it is, conditioning. When we talk about the police, understand that we're not talking about the police as a, as a single person, but as a system. When you are a part or contribute to the policing structure, you are upholding and reinforcing ideology that doesn't prioritize the dignity nor the humanity of black and brown people. You are instead protecting and you are instead protecting the assets and capital and serving a class of people whose very existence is a threat to our own because the only way they can stay in power, maintain and build on their wealth is to steal it from our communities. While I'm up here, I have a duty to do right by Eric. I have a duty to treat him with the humanity that was unjustly taken from him because often when people are killed by the police, that moment becomes a defining moment of their lives. But I believe that Eric is more than how he died. I believe what defines Eric is the legacy he left behind. When I look to the people on my left, when I look to the people on my right, when I look to the people behind me and in front of me, all I see is Eric, because Eric is all of us who wake up in the shadows, not as the other 12 officers who were involved in the murder of Eric. Eric, a proud black man who loved his mother, who loved his wife, who loved his children, who loved his family, who loved his community, was taken from us. Erica, a strong black woman who continued to fight and champion her father's legacy, even at the cost of her life, was taken from us because the system couldn't get it right and still ain't getting it right. I know somewhere out there both Eric and Erica are together watching us proudly today. No, I know today both of them are standing right here, right now with us in solidarity because both of them reside in each and every person that showed up here today and will continue to stay with us as we leave because the fight is never over. It's six years later, we are still here, we are still fighting. Justice for Eric and Erica Gardner. Buenos días, mi nombre es Ana Ramírez, creo ya me están conociendo. Soy una ciudadana que estoy uh, viviendo desde hace 15 años aproximadamente en esta gran nación, en este estado. Eh, trabajo eh, en diferentes cosas. Eh, pago taxes desde hace 15 años. No tengo récord criminal. No soy una criminal. Pero vengo hoy, estamos a completando 22 horas de ayuno. Mientras sentimos hambre, pasamos frío, dormimos bajo la casa de una de las casas de Jeff Bezos, del delincuente. ¿Por qué delincuente? Porque yo sí pago taxes y soy indocumentada. Y ese señor no paga taxes, eso lo hacen los delincuentes. Y hoy vengo a decirle a Andrew Como que no nos vamos a ir, que no sentimos hambre, que no sentimos cansancio, que no sentimos miedo, que eso ya quedó en el olvido, que al contrario, que él tiene que salir de su zona de confort. Porque pagamos taxes, porque trabajamos honradamente, no somos delincuentes, no tenemos récord criminal. Hacemos un llamado humildemente al señor Andrew Como para que cobre taxes a esos millonarios, a esos delincuentes que tienen deuda con la sociedad. Mientras nosotros los trabajadores 
los de construcción, los de limpieza, los de restaurantes, housekeeping, limpiando las casas y las oficinas para que ellos estén sentados hoy mismo en aire acondicionado. Con la servidumbre que somos nosotros, los indocumentados, que se nos ha exigido cada año taxes por taxes por taxes por taxes y lo hemos venido haciendo. Y ahora no queremos robarles nada, no queremos limosnearles nada, queremos solamente lo justo. Queremos que devuelvan y que se haga un fondo económico para que se ayude a todas estas familias que están en la oscuridad, que están en las sombras, porque no tenemos papeles, porque eso es lo que nos achacan, pero si sí pagamos taxes porque no los exigen, si sí somos gente honrada y damos ejemplo a esta gran nación. Compañeros, tenemos 22 horas de ayuno y estamos a dispuestos y por ir más o por, por más horas. ¿Quién está dispuesto? ¿Quién ha trabajado por esta ciudad? Tenemos fuerza y vamos por ti, Andrew Como. ¿Sí se puede? ¡Sí se puede! ¡Sí se puede! Okay. Now I want to call the next and last speaker for this circle over here. So if you can please join us, Israel Adeniji. Um, my name is Israel Adeniji, and I'm here on the accord of uh, the Brooklyn Community uh, Bill Fund. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. Um, you are here to fight for thousands of immigrants out there that are deprived, that are excluded, that are hurting right now. So I want to commend you for coming out and I want to say a big thank you to everybody. Uh, first, I want to uh, put an appeal out to stakeholders to uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo and um, all the members of the House who are saddled with responsibility of uh, passing bills into law, that they should first see us as human first before they see us as immigrants. I see everybody here putting on masks. Do you know why? I will remind them. We are putting on our masks because the pandemic is not a respect of nobody. Anybody could be affected. It doesn't care which race you belong. Neither does it care the color of your skin. It doesn't even care about your political affiliation. It doesn't even care about the belief, the belief in the religion that you have. So that's why I question why some people get a support structure, why some, other, some others were excluded. So um, it has not been easy coming out from immigration detention a little while ago. And while I'm still trying to find my feet to put the food on the table for my family, I got my wife and my daughter here, and the pandemic struck. And believe me, I, I have people, families, single mothers, Elderly who are immigrants that call me seven to twelve calls in a week asking me to help them to put food on their table, buy diapers for their kids. These people are hoping at the moment they are going through a position in life that is so depressing. Now for them, the fear is not only the fear of the COVID-19 but the fear of dropping dead as a result of no food to eat, no place to stay. And that's why we are making an appeal. Well, I keep saying this, I commend the government for um, trying to provide support for some people at the moment. Maybe it's because of the way I come from. Because where we come from, um, I, know what, I know what is obtainable there. So I commend them. But what I'm trying to say is, well, how will it help them if they spread this happiness, this love around? 
We are not born of a bunch of UFOs that fall from the sky. We're humans. We have, uh, we have pain. We are frustrated. We have fears. We feel frustrated too. So uh, I'm questioning now. If they want to give love, why don't they spread it around? Why would some people be excluded? It wouldn't hurt the government if they decide to put happiness in the family of Mr. John, happiness in the family of Ms. Shanika, happiness in the family of Mr. Fernandez, happiness in the family of Mr. Singh, and happiness in the family of Mr. Adeniji. Happiness starts from the family. A happy family means a happy community. A happy community brings about happiness to the structures of government like the police and the, the court system. And the happiness of the structure of government is an happiness for the government as an institution of the state. So I don't see the rationale behind some people being excluded and some people being taken care of. So basically, I am sending an appeal out on behalf of the thousands of people who are out there who don't have the same platform that we have now to show their frustration, to show what they are going through. Children are crying. They've got no place to stay. They've got no food. Now the house in a mess because the children don't even have diapers to wear. So please, it's an appeal, like I said, to everyone who make decisions, they should pass some bill, get people to help immigrants at this time. We have fears, we have pain, and we are going through difficult time at the moment. So I see an America where everybody is happy together. If we are going to defeat this time, it is important that we are all happy together. When a section of the economy is happy, and the other section feeling deprived, feeling excluded, that can be good. So that's why we are asking that if we are going to scale through this time, we can do it together. We can be together. We are not asking for two more. Immigrants, we we are not we are not all criminals. Some of us have a lot to offer to the economy. All we are asking, we all can be uh, be the military personnel, but we have one way or the other that we can promote. We can bring more healthy economy to the US. So. Instead of making things harder for us now, we are appealing for a support structure that will be able to uh, make us provide for our family, our friends, our situation at this time. Once again, I say, I thank everyone who come out and posterity is going to remember you for this day because you come out here to speak on behalf of thousands of people who don't have the voice. So, thank you so much. But the last invitation is that you come to the circle over here. Okay, rapidamente. Vamos a tirar las manos and we're going to reach for the sky. Y vamos a estirarlas hacia el cielo. So, stretch your hands and reach to the sky. Remember, we're about to march, so we just want to do this. Both hands, you don't have a mic. Okay, and then we're going to reach for our roots and remember where we come from. So we're going to go down. Entonces, ahora vamos a recordarnos de nuestras raíces y de donde venimos. Entonces, vamos a ir hacia, hacia las raíces, hacia la tierra. Okay, okay, un ratito. Y ahora vamos a practicar distanciamiento social y van a estirar los brazos y van a hacer así. Okay, y después para el otro lado. So now you're going to stretch your hands and practice some social distancing. So move away if you're too close to the person close to you. And stretch like that. And stretch like that. Okay? 
And then, if you want to do it, one last thing. And again, Batala. Is Batala not coming to the circle? Daniel, can you? The last one, el último, vamos a hacer así los pies. Y van a agachar en su cuerpo, la parte de arriba, su torso, lo que más puedan. Así, doblando el cuerpo. Lo que más puedan, un tantico. So, your feet, and then your upper body, you're going to fold it to stretch as much as you can. And switch. Switch, and stretch as much as you can.
New York is an old woman, Afro-Brazilian percussion ensemble. And we are here today with Mesky Evans and Isidoro, Mesky Marti, or Bob, who have joined us in the fight today. Our mission is to promote Afro-Brazilian culture through music. We believe that music brings peace. And we believe that women have the strength to bring this peace.